Oh gosh, it's the day before the trip. It's the day before the trip and I have to admit, I am not really ready, hence pile of clothes in the back um, that I will not show you anymore because I have no idea what to pack. There's so much to do, but I am so excited. Let's do this. All right, so hiking the Narrows has been a dream of mine forever. It's been tough trying to gauge how difficult it would be to make it happen, but with a little research, we're doing it. Whenever heading to the Southwest, whether that's Arizona or Utah, we always like to use Las Vegas as a stop to break up the drive and for some comfort. And this trip is no different. Uh, we normally stop in Barstow because, hello, and on our way to Vegas, and we're gonna get there close to midnight, but that's okay. Stopping at midnight, get like five or six hours of sleep, and then we'll get back on the road, but first, let's eat. Since we arrived to Vegas so late, it's just a quick stop. So no food or drinks, just a place to lay our heads for the night until we head to Zion, which is less than three hours away. We arrived at midnight to the Planet Hollywood Hotel and there was not a single person at the front desk. We checked in via kiosk, which was quick and easy, but I'm a little conflicted about these robots. Home for the night. It is past 1 a.m., but I just wanted to check in. I should totally be asleep. I need to get up in just like four hours to go to Zion and I'm almost too excited to sleep. Okay, must sleep, must sleep. Okay, I'm excited. Very quick night here in Vegas, but good night. Okay. It is 6.35, we are making super good time. We're just filling up the gas tank. GPS says we'll still get there around 9 a.m. And I'm just really hoping to make our uh, shuttle ticket, which is between 9 and 10 a.m., which you need to uh, get to the trailhead of the Narrows. Um, as a backup, I do have a trailhead, I mean, I do have a shuttle ticket, uh, another shuttle ticket for one to two, but I really don't want to have to hike that. That is my backup plan in case we had any problems this morning, but here we go. We got this. We got this. I'm so excited. Spoiler alert. We did not make the 9 a.m. shuttle reservation. Totally made a mistake. There's a time zone difference. For sure missed the shuttle, our first shuttle, but I do have a backup shuttle. So yay for planning my own mistakes. Um, I'm still beating myself up about it, but I blame Google Maps. The good news is you won't make the same mistake as me because you no longer need a shuttle reservation for Zion. As of May 28, 2021, the National Park Service announced they are discontinuing the shuttle reservation system due to lifted transportation restrictions. I have conflicted emotions about this because although the reservation system added pressure to arriving on time, we were able to board quickly and were relieved to have a guaranteed spot. I was reading that prior to ever having a reservation system, wait times to board the Zion shuttle could easily be over an hour with summer crowds. This just means be sure to plan accordingly when you come to Zion during the peak season and arrive as early as you can to avoid lines. During the peak visitation months of March through September, you will need to board the shuttle to get to trails like the Narrows and Angel's Landing. And don't worry because the shuttle is free. The Zion parking lot fills up fast, making it difficult to find parking. If you want to park inside Zion, be sure to get there early or you might have to park outside and take a shuttle into Zion. With time to kill, we strolled parts of the Watchman Trail near the Visitor Center along the Virgin River.
the trail has some pretty cool views. Okay, so we are chilling by the river uh, because we're gonna rest and wait until our shuttle, if you can hear me over the river, we're gonna wait to get our shuttle at 1 p.m. But yeah, not bad views. Also, it is like 86 degrees, the next to the river with the wind. Heading to the shuttle to go to the Narrows. I think Stitz, are you ready? Perhaps. <laughs> We're ready. Bye. The one thing I'll say about Zion is the rumors are true. The park is very popular. It was the third most popular national park in 2020 with 3.6 million visitors that year, sitting just below Yellowstone and Great Smoky Mountains National Park. There were pretty much crowds everywhere we went, so be prepared, but it didn't take away from the beauty of the park at all. To get to the Narrows, it'll be the last shuttle stop called the Temple of Sinawava. Try saying that 10 times fast. Once you arrive to the trailhead, there's a water refill station and a bathroom. Once you've started the trail to the Narrows, be prepared to hike for about a mile on a paved sidewalk before meeting the river entrance. The Narrows is a slot canyon for hikers who don't mind getting a little wet, because you definitely will. The hike is typically done in the summer after the river recedes from the spring and is safe enough for passage, although you can do this hike at your own risk most of the year with the proper gear. The narrows are prone to flash flooding, so always be sure to check the weather. You can make the hike as short and as long as you'd like by turning around at any time. The best scenery is about two hours in at Wall Street, where the walls truly narrow. Hiking through the narrows is not necessary. Easy. This is not a hike to be taken lightly, although supremely enjoyable. The water is cold, which is why it's best to hike during the summer months. And one feature I don't think people talk about enough is the terrain. The rocks can be slippery and the boulders vary in size as you're hiking over them. I wouldn't call this an easy hike, but maybe more a slow and steady hike. Let's talk gear. Because you're in and out of the water, you have two options. One, you can rent gear that includes neoprene socks, waterproof shoes, and a hiking stick, which is cool and I saw a lot of people wearing this option. You can also rent dry pants and a dry suit if you really don't want to get wet and are worried about the cold, but those are kind of meant for cooler and winter months. Or two, you can just wear your own pair of solid trail running shoes, like I did. Personally, I thought it worked out amazing. We hiked in May, and it was 80 degrees, and the cool water felt great. I hiked in leggings and a tank top, and I was very comfortable. If you do choose to go this route, I'd recommend having closed-toed shoes with thick soles and good traction, because you will be traversing over wet rocks of varying size. I will say probably not heavy hiking boots are the best choice because when wet, they're going to feel really, really heavy. So I prefer a trail running shoe, but you do whatever fits best for you. Lastly, but honestly, the most important piece of gear is a hiking stick. I cannot recommend this enough. It really helps you balance and have more of a sure foot as you hike against the current. I don't think I could have done this hike without one. It's very easy to roll your ankle or be really unsure because sometimes the water gets a bit foggy, but um, this is my number one recommendation is a hiking stick. 
Other items I recommend are a dry bag to sling over your shoulder, or I even bought smaller dry bags to stick inside my camel bag to keep my most prized possessions dry, like my wallet and any camera gear I had. When you're hiking the Narrows, you will most likely come in contact with waist deep water once or twice, and I just think it's better to be safe than sorry. Another item you might want to consider is a waterproof case for your phone if you don't want to carry a bag. I'll be sure to link all my gear in the description below. Okay, progress report. Matt's getting a little tired. It's hard on our feet. Um, we have hiked almost two miles in the Narrows. The crowds are just barely thinning, but just barely. But it is pretty. I'm trying to decide if it's worth the hike. It's pretty awesome, but we're not super in. I heard it gets a little bit more narrow. Also, don't forget to pack lots of water and snacks to get you through the hike because it's definitely a workout. So be sure to plan for the day. I think another important thing that's incredibly easy to forget is to remember to enjoy the view. You may get tired or trip, but remember to pause, take a break, and just take it all in. Not that you need reminding, but the shuttle back is going to have a line too. So get those bathroom breaks in and rest those legs as you wait. Have you hiked the Narrows? Tell me about your experience. And if you have any questions or tips, be sure to put them in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe so I can see you in the next one where we'll be hiking Bryce Canyon. See you then.